Hello, and thank you for joining us for another exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. Welcome to a new feature on Inventor's Quick Tips where we take a look at some viewer posted questions. The feature is called Inventors Want to Know. Now, some of the questions that posters ask are things that multiple inventors may be facing. So periodically, we'll be looking through the posts and providing relevant information based on these posts in a feature called Inventors Want to Know. Welcome to episode one. So Cosmo John writes, if an invention has five embodiments described in the sections of the patent specification before the claim section, does it mean these embodiments should be recited in the claim section, else these embodiments will not be protected by the patent? If recited in the claim section, should each embodiment be written as an independent claim or five independent claims? Maybe. Okay. So let's take a look at a sample patent. Here's a patent sample and a patent has two main parts it has a written description also referred to as a specification and here is our specification my awesome invention includes an a connected to a b coupled to a c sometimes you can even have a d connected to the c alternatively you can have an a and a b but then connect g and h instead of c so we have a couple different embodiments here for this invention we have a b and c Sometimes we can have D, so we have A, B, C, and D. Alternatively, we can have A, B, G, H with no C. Let's take a look at the claims we have. We have two claims. First claim is a widget comprising an A and a B coupled to a C. The second claim is a dependent claim, meaning it depends from claim one, which is basically everything we have in claim one plus a D coupled to the C. And these letters are just placeholders for whatever the thing is that's part of your invention. So it could be nuts, bolts, brackets, doesn't matter. We're just symbolically using letters to talk about the different elements of the claim. Now, the claims provide what I call offensive protection, whereas things in the written description provide what I call defensive protection, and I'm going to explain what those are. But right now we have two embodiments that are offensively protected and everything in the written description is defensively protected. So let's talk about what those mean. Offensive protection means to prevent others from doing, making, selling, using your invention. You have the right to block others from doing it as long as your patent is in force. Those are what the claims are for. The claims let you prevent others from doing it. Defensive protection means to prevent others from patenting it. So things that are in the written description prevent others from being able to get a patent on it. So when we, when we have protected something only with defensive protection, we can't stop others from doing it, but we can prevent them from getting a patent on it. So going back to uh, the original question, with our claims as they are, we have offensive protection for these two embodiments here, the A plus B plus C, which is provided by claim one, and A plus B plus C plus D, that embodiment, which is protected by claim two, assuming we get these claims to issue as a patent. Now, up here in our written description, we have another embodiment, which is the A, B, G, H. That is defensively protected. So if you wanted to also prevent people from doing A, B, G, and H, you would want to add that as, say, a claim three to this hypothetical application. And as to whether it is a independent or dependent claim, that depends on how the claims are written. Since we have our claim one here, which has an A, B, and a C, and this third embodiment that's currently defensively protected doesn't have C in it, we'd probably want to make a new independent claim to cover A, B, G, and H without having C. So just to recap, defensive protection prevents others from getting a patent on the concept or your invention by virtue of describing it and thus creating prior art that is now going to be used against other uh, future inventors if they try to patent your idea. Offensive protection claims embodiments, and those claims, if in an issued patent, give the patent holder the right to prevent others from making, using, or selling the invention as long as the patent is in force, 
in the jurisdiction of the patent, which in this case is the United States. So hopefully this helped uh, further understand the types of protection that patents can offer. Once again, thanks for checking out this exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips, and we hope to see you again soon.